going from zero to $20 hero. Hey guys, and welcome back aboard the good airship Hopium, where today I wanted to discuss uh, the new price point of Gigantic. This is just a rant. You don't want to listen to it. Don't listen to it. If you just want to watch the gameplay up above, just watch the gameplay up above. Uh, but I really did want to sit down and have a discussion with this. So if you have any opinions on the new $20 price point of Gigantic, post them in the comments below because I'm curious to hear them. This is probably the biggest change coming to the game in a lot of ways. And I think it's worth discussing. So, in argument A, we basically have the fact that this game was free. And I think argument A is probably the one that comes from the most emotional place. Because it's definitely the one that I started on. Argument A is that this game was free, and that now it is not free. And that that is going to turn off a lot of people. That it is going to keep people away from playing this game that would have otherwise played this game. And that that is not a good thing. Because this game is going to need every player it can get. It's also an argument where you can make that people who played this game before and invested money in this game before. Or didn't invest money in this game before but just invested time in it. Won't want to sit down and play the game because it now has a price point. Me, for example, I put hundreds of hours into Gigantic. Do I want to just all of a sudden pay $20 for the chance to play again? It feels kind of like an insult. It feels kind of like Gearbox just wanting uh, some quick cash on this game. And that's kind of insulting. Um, as much as I love this game, it kind of hurts to be in that position, to be sort of you know blackmailed into playing, paying money to play the game that I love again. And it sucks because I, pl I played the game for free. I mean, the game was free. And what I will say is the only reason I ever started playing Gigantic was because it was free. I, at the time, I forget what the exact reasoning was, but I was browsing the free section of the Xbox One marketplace. And at the time, there was only about five, six games in there. There wasn't a lot of choice. But one of those games was gigantic, and one of the reasons I decided is to start looking up videos and streams on it and to start researching it and seeing if I wanted to play this game, if I wanted to spend time downloading it, because at the time I had a very shitty connection. It took me hours to download stuff. Like, I think gigantic even took me probably like three, four, five, six hours to download. I had a terrible connection, so wasting my time downloading something was something I would, I I would avoid doing stuff if I didn't have to when it came to downloads. And so I sat down and I researched the game and I thought it looked just great and I ended up downloading it. But one of the only reasons I got it was because it was free. And this is the biggest motivating factor for me is because I wanted something to play that was free. I didn't have a lot of spare money at the time. I was trying to save to buy a house. I wouldn't be here today if Gigantic had a price point for entry. And... Will that be an issue for future players who maybe want to get into the game but see that it now has a price point? Also, we have the fact that it was free to play before. If me, a person who loves this game, feels insulted by that, imagine how the person who just wants to try the game feels. You can imagine that a lot of those people are going to feel insulted hearing that it went from free to $20. I spent money in this game, man. I did. I bought the uh, the, the Founders Pack. I spent money on premium currency on a regular basis just to try to support this game. I really did try to help this game financially the first time around. So it is, uh, it's really difficult for me to not feel a little insulted about paying the $20 price point. And, you know, this game is going to need every player it can get. I keep saying that. That is probably the biggest argument for this. Every player you turn away with that $20 price point is one more person that could have fallen in love with Gigantic. And that's a that's a tough call to make. So now we're going to go on to argument B. So an argument B is that this really isn't that big of an issue. Argument A, I think, comes from a place of, I love this game and it was free before, and so there's an emotional reaction to having to pay $20 for it now. However, they have made... I know there's a lot of people that are going to argue this one way or another, but there's some, some big, as much as some people want to say some of this stuff was in development at Motiga, and I'm sure some of it was, 
I don't think all of it was. I think they have made a decent, I don't think a huge, huge investment, but they have made a decent investment in this game, um, polishing it into this new version. And they need to recoup their money somehow, and I get that. But we are basically getting the entire original base game, plus two maps, plus two characters, plus all of the premium skins we have before, plus all these new launcher VFX, plus all these emotes that didn't exist before. That's a lot of content. For $20, I think the Founders Pack before was 30 And you're getting two more characters than that had. I think three more maps because uh, uh, Woods wasn't in the Founders Pack before. You're getting all these launcher effects and all these emotes. You're getting all these premium skins. You're getting so much more than you did for that old $30 price point. You are getting so much here um, with this new $20 price point. $20 also isn't that much. And studies have shown console gamers are willing to pay $20. Like, it's not that big of a deal. And I think one of the things that's going for us right now is we kind of have the wind at our back, right? We have Power World... And we have uh, Helldivers 2, both of which have launched with lower price points and done extremely well. The market is very much at our backs right now because there's this sentiment out there that, you know, big gaming companies are charging $60 for things like, uh, oh, what's that Ubisoft pirate game that just looks terrible? Uh, the, the boat one, uh, uh, Skull and Bones or whatever the heck it's called. Um, that game is $60 and there's so many other games besides that one. The people are arguing right now that are coming out at $60 and we have things like GTA's executives talking about how, you know, people need to pay hundreds of dollars for a game. And we have, uh, Ubisoft executive talking about how people shouldn't even own games at all. And you should just pay to rent them month by month. And this type of talk from these big CEOs has really pushed, uh, the market towards these cheaper but very, very high-quality titles like Power World, like Helldivers, and hopefully like Gigantic. And Gigantic is, I think it's cheaper than both Power World and Helldivers because I think one of them is 30-something. I think the other one's 40. Uh, so $20 really isn't that bad. And if people see a quality in Gigantic, it could easily take off. If we have people paying $30, $40 for those other titles, I don't think it's unreasonable for them to pay $20 for this one. It also recoups some of Gearbox's investment in the game, and it makes the game a bit more stable. One of the things you have when you have a live service game is you have this expectation. You have to put out a roadmap of what's going to come. What's going to come next for DLC? What's going to come next for the next season pass, the next battle pass? Um, you need to have constant updates. There's this constant, uh, desire by the community that's looming over you for what you're going to put out next. And going back to this old model that we had for years and years and years, and nobody really complained about that much of, you know, you pay a certain amount for the, the base game and then you pay a little bit for DLC packs, not microtransactions, DLC packs, Things that have more than one piece of DLC, you're not just paying for one skin, you're paying for like five skins or uh, ten skins. Maybe you're paying for a whole slew of skins with one character or a new character. Maybe you're just paying for a new character. Um, stuff like that is stuff we did for a long, long time. And honestly, I kind of prefer that model sometimes. Um, there's also the stigma, and I know this doesn't affect... This is kind of regional. It affects different regions and different um, income levels differently. But there is a stigma uh, that is attached to free-to-play games. Um, especially for some older gamers. Growing up, man, if you saw a free-to-play game, you might hop on it, but you were not expecting quality. You were expecting something to be just dog shit. And whether or not, you know, times have changed. I know that we got we got some quality free games out there. But... That still is in the back of my head. Anytime I download any free game, my first thought is, this is probably going to be terrible, but we'll see. And, you know, so occasionally I'm surprised, um, but I would say probably equally as often, I am, you know, it meets my expectations of being terrible. Um, so there's so much going on here 
but we're getting so much content for that twenty dollars and it creates a nice foundation to make them back some of their money and because it's clear they've put work into this game so is it worth the twenty dollar price point and i would say yeah twenty dollars isn't that much we know console gamers are, are willing to pay twenty dollars for stuff Console gamers are much more likely than PC gamers, we know that, to, you know, shell out a little bit of cash to get any game at any level, uh, especially something for 20 I don't think it'll be that hard to sell um, on console. And the fact that it's coming to both the major consoles, uh, Switch is a whole separate issue, um, and I think there's probably reasons for that. Um, but as far as, you know, do I think people will willingly pay $20 to play this game? I do, because over the last five years since the game shut down, one of the things that has happened is so many big YouTube channels have championed this game. We have people like Shammy out there who have gone out and made these very, very successful videos with millions of views um, championing this game and saying how great it was and how it died before its time, and there's so much in interest. You look at that comment section on any of these videos talking about this game coming back, and there's tons of people out there talking about... I, I, I've i hardly seen any negative comments about this game. Almost everybody in those comment sections is like, this game is amazing, or I really want to play this game. I heard so much about it, and I never got a chance to play it. I, I did not find a lot of comments out there that were saying, I refuse to pay the $20 for this game, um, or this is too much. And so... I really think this is a prime time. We don't have the problem of a major competitor in the hero shooter genre right now. That is kind of died off. Hero shooters have basically all but died off. And when Overwatch tried to revive them, uh, Overwatch kind of fell flat on its face with that. And also last time in 2017, that was the launch year of the Battle Royale craze. We had um, all the major Battle Royales came out that year. And we were battling against them, and those have kind of died off too. People are looking for something new to play in multiplayer versus. You see that right now with Helldivers. The first week Helldivers was out, there were so many people begging for some kind of multiplayer in that. I think people are looking for a new multiplayer experience, and maybe maybe they're willing to go back to the hero shooter slash MOBA route. Maybe they're willing to experiment a little bit if it's only for $20. Um... To be honest, at the end of the day, like I said, I just $20 isn't that big of a deal to me. Um, I will probably buy the game on Steam and Xbox, and I'll probably buy it for a couple of friends. $20 really isn't that bad. Um, just let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and Snappy Dude out, y'all. See you on the Airship Opium.